Now let's go back to our user. So now we want to sign into one of the user accounts and see from their perspective what it actually looks like when you create a new user and you give them the details, what services they have access to, and how they can actually access those services. Okay, so to do that, I'm gonna reset, um, gonna reset uh, Ben Jackson, this user's details. Um, here, you can always um, create a new password for the user, and uh, you can require the user to change their password when they sign in. So when you create a new account and you reset a user's password, um, this is standard. If you want them to create a new password, once you sign in. So when you send the details, user details to a user or an employee, you want them to change their password definitely. And uh, you can tick this box to allow them to change the password once um, they try to sign in. And I'm gonna leave it at that so I can show you how that works. With the reset password, I'm just gonna take a note of the password that was provided. And then uh, I'm gonna open a, you can load up the email as well. So we'll need the email and password to log in. We'll do close. And now all we're going to do is sign in to the user account, okay? I'm gonna open uh, an incognito window because we already signed in on one. So I'm gonna open a new browser, okay? Again, yeah. okay? So, I said to create a new in private uh, tab and we go to portal.office.com. That's the site that we uh, that you need to send to the users when you create a user account for them to access the services and uh, everything that they have um, access to. All right. Then I'll sign in with the uh, Ben Jackson account, because that's the account that we want to see uh, used for this test. You say Ben Jackson, do next. We enter the password that we reset. And automatically, as I mentioned earlier, it will prompt you to create a new password. So if I'm Ben at this point, I would you know, um, change my password to whatever I like. And uh, by default, you have to have uh, um, a standard password, which is about eight characters in length, and it must be complex. It must have an uppercase, lowercase, and uh, and a numerical um, character as well, just to make it complex. Okay, so we're going to use a, a standard password here. Let's do that. All right, as you can see, because the password isn't too complex, this asked me to change it, which is fine. Just to show you how secured your account has to be before uh, you can access you can change your password. So we don't want simple passwords that can easily be um, act or easily be guessed. So I'm just gonna use a totally random password here. And we say sign in. All right. So once we've successfully signed in uh, uh, as the user, we can uh, see from the user's point of view what they have access to, um, what are the uh, apps that they can access, and uh, what it looks like on the user's end. And uh, we can just do next to this. It's giving you some information um, about your account because this is the first time that you're accessing it. And uh, you can just do next. It's just giving you a uh, brief information on, on your account and what you can do, all right? Now, this is what the user sees, okay? Uh, because of the license that I give, uh, that I uh, assigned, which is the E3 license, it allows you to download um, Microsoft apps locally on your computer, and you can do that from here. So the user, once they sign in, 
They can install Microsoft 365 applications, and this would include Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, and, and more, and Teams uh, as well, automatically by clicking this option. You will download it, and you can uh, set it up on your computer if, if for the user. Uh, but that's by the way. Uh, what I wanted to show you exactly is on the left side here, you can see uh, a brief information on the apps that the user has access to. Um, there's Outlook for emails, okay? There's Microsoft Teams, there's uh, Word, there's Excel, there's PowerPoint, a lot of the applications that I mentioned uh, during the PowerPoint presentation uh, is visible here, and a lot more applications as well. If you click on apps, you'll see more applications that are embedded in Microsoft 365 that the user has access to. Now remember that the applications that a user have access to majorly depends on the kind of license that you assign to the user. The reason why uh, the user can see all these apps is because the license um, allows those applications and we didn't turn off any access to any application when we were setting up the user accounts, okay? So uh, we're going to be touching on just a few, right? Since this user has been created, like as I mentioned, they would automatically have a OneDrive account, which is personal to them, where they can save files, and uh, majorly everything that they work on would, uh, would be saved uh, in OneDrive. So if they work on anything in the cloud, it would automatically be saved in their OneDrive, okay? Uh, if we decide to open a Word, for instance, we can create a new uh, document directly on the browser, just like Microsoft Word, and we can access and you know write documents, create documents, and all of that. We can also uh, do Excel, same thing. You know, anywhere you go, seamlessly over the web, we can use any of these applications very easily, uh, as well as uh, PowerPoint and all the other applications. Okay, uh, for OneDrive, let's go back to all the apps. OneDrive, as I mentioned, is their uh, personal drive, just like Google Drive. If you have a Gmail account, you know you have a Google Drive and you can save data and save your files. The same thing applies to, in this case as well, once you create a user and you assign them a license, you will provision a, a, a OneDrive account for them where they can save all their files and uh, you know access it at any point in time. Now, because I created uh, a new document here, which automatically saves, by the way, okay? Um, it already created that document and it's saved in my OneDrive under my files, as you can see here. So everything is seamless, everything is easy, um, and it automatically saves, so you don't need to uh, click save all the time. I can just type anything and uh, it would save as I work on it, okay? Oh, and I uh, cancel or just close the document. If I go here, by the time I open it up, what I typed will be there because it saves immediately as you work on it. So that's one of the flexibilities and, and good thing about uh, working on the cloud because it automatically saves. You don't need to, you know, click save or, or whatnot. You can play around with this. It works just like the normal uh, Microsoft Word that you know, or Microsoft Excel that you know. And you can always save them or export them uh, on your local machine or download a copy and all of that, all right? Okay, so that's OneDrive. It's your personal drive uh, or the, personal, the user's personal drive where you can save data and also share files and, and whatnot. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the user's end. And this is what they would work with on a daily basis, all right? Now for Teams, as I mentioned before, Teams is a collaboration tool. It's a tool that allows uh, employees to communicate with each other, um, share ideas, and as well as um, join meetings and, and go on calls uh, within the company, okay? So this is a very good tool. If some of you have worked in companies that uses Teams before, you would know what, uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, it's similar to Zoom, if most of you know Zoom. It's similar to Zoom, but this is more uh, uh, managed um, by the company, uh, as well as Zoom also has uh, a managed service as well for the organization. So it's similar. And uh, I'm just going to give you a brief, uh, brief description of what Teams does. Remember 
that in the beginning I created a, a group called training users, right? You can see it here. This is the group, and I uh, I made Ben the owner of the group. Okay, so this is the group, and I'll show you details now. When I go to manage uh, team, you would see that he is the user, and all the other um, members are the users that I added into it. Now, why I'm showing you this is because I mentioned in the beginning that everything, every technology, every application in the Microsoft 365 all connected together and they all operate uh, under the same in one synergy. So they're all connected together, okay? So this is the user's point of view. This is what they see in Teams. And uh, you can, you know, uh, just start conversation with your teammates, chat. You can also create separate uh, Teams channels, you know, within the group. You can just create a channel for a different team, maybe, uh, you know, a different conversation, if you want everyone in the team to have access to it, you can do that. But if you want it to be more specific to specific teammates, you can also do that. So this is another way of uh, sharing data and uh, being able to manage um, who has access to what and what not. Okay, uh, so this is how it will look on the end. You can play around with this. This this is just a basic view, all right? There's a lot to learn here. So please make sure that if you want to learn more about it, you go read up on the documentation just to see more features that you can play around with and also implement them now that you have uh, you know, a trial account to do so. Uh, if we click on chat on the left here, this is where you can automatically search for users in your organization. Okay, uh, let's search for uh, follow. If I uh, click on search and I say follow, it will bring up um, all the follows that are in my organization. I think follow David's. Yeah, we go. As you can see, just search for the user in your organization. I will bring it out. Now, if, and I can send them a, a message and say, hey, hello. If they're signed in and uh, active, they will receive the message and then we can chat. Okay. If I want to chat with somebody outside of my organization, if the administrators of your organization allow you to communicate with people outside the organization, you can simply do that. All you need to do is search for their email. And I can, uh, I can test that for you using my work email. Uh, let's say I do have a journal. This is test. We're communicating with someone outside of the organization. Okay, since I'm outside the organization, it will automatically tell me, do you want to search for this person externally? Yes, I'll say yes. If this is allowed by your organization, if it's set up for you to communicate with people outside the organization, it would allow you and you can simply just click and you can chat with people outside the organization as long as they have uh, teams as well. Okay, uh, if I send myself a message here, remember this is a totally different a person outside of my organization. I can simply pull up my teams here and I should have see the message. Yes. Okay. So this is just about chats and uh, emails and uh, sorry, and uh, the groups. 